Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here, welcome back to Gent Sense. Today I'm gonna to be taking a look at what I will preemptively say is the most hyped fragrance release for men, designer-wise, of the year. Now technically we have like four more months to go. Well, four and a half, yeah, four and a half. But I feel like there's not gonna be something else that comes out this year that's going to reach this level of critical hype because everybody's been talking about this, whether they're saying they love it, they hate it, they're somewhere in the middle, it's getting talked about. Of course, of course, it is none other than Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mal Elixir. Yes, a hype beast and another elixir fragrance. I think we can comfortably say 2023 is the year of the elixir because there are still yet more elixir fragrances that have been announced that people haven't been able to get their hands on yet. Uh, but there are elixirs coming down the road and I feel like next year there's gonna be even more elixirs. So right now we're living in the time of the elixir. You can tell your children about this in the future. I made it through the fragrance oud wars, the blue fragrance wars, and then the War of the Elixirs, yeah. Well, like I said, this has been heavily talked about, heavily hyped. When I did my first impressions, I liked it a bunch. And I have been wearing it since then, obviously. And since we're about to head into fall in the Northern Hemisphere, I figured, let's go ahead and get a review on it out there. We're technically not in fall just yet, but it's not that far off. As always, this will be linked down in the description. Feel free to check it out down there. And pause the video now if you would like some codes to save between 10 and 20% at a bunch of different fragrance websites. So you have Triple Traders for Clones, Lucky Scent Twisted Lily, Max Aroma for Niche, also Designer at uh, Max Aroma. Got Soul Avant Garde with a bunch of different brands, just a lot of different codes here for you. Try to add more as time goes as well. All right, let's start it off by checking out the presentation. So here we have the can, uh, not a box, of course, because it's a Lamal fragrance. So on the front there, you have the name of the house, you have the name of the fragrance, got nothing up top. And on the bottom, you have the size, you have the concentration, you have the badge code. My badge code, 30962. And as always, I will let you know you open these from the bottom. So if you're somebody just now getting into fragrances and you should get one of these in and you look at it and you're like, what is it? How, how do I get the fragrance out? It's a can. What do I do? Well, the first thing you don't do is throw your can, uh, but you just pull on the bottom. Pretty simple. And then your little man will be sitting down inside like that. And here we have the bottle. I actually love the way this one looks. I think it looks awesome. So you have this cool golden design with uh, kind of an amber color to the lines. And uh, the lines are actually see-through. So it gives it a really cool look. It feels, frankly, more expensive and a little bit classier than the other Lamal fragrances. At least as classy as a, a male torso gilded in gold could look, I guess. They even upgraded the little pull tab, so that's nice. A little bit higher end than the other ones. On the bottom, you've got your usual information and your badge code is gonna be down there as well. Let's go ahead and waste a couple sprays here. Uh, Lamal fragrances in general have really good atomizers, so here we go. Yeah, they are slightly reminiscent of the old uh, Creed like fire hose atomizers. If you know, you know. Those were really good atomizers back in the day. Uh, it's not quite that good as the old Creed's, but yeah, this, uh, it's close enough. Whew. Now the most important part, Lamal Elixir. How does it smell and has it held up? Well, it has been compared to the smell of this one, Lamal Le Parfum. And actually that's the first thing that I thought of when I smelled this one. I was like, oh, it's fairly similar to this, which is not really a bad thing because Le Mal Le Parfum, I love. I think it's a fantastic release. A lot of you out there do. It used Iris in a very interesting way to kind of reshape and modernize the original Le Mal, make it more wearable, make it kind of a sexy evening fragrance with a bit of class to it as well. So yeah, I thought Le Mal Elixir is kind of like Le Mal Le Parfum with a twist, essentially. And I did like it a lot. As I said earlier, in my first impressions, I really enjoyed this one. It was a positive first impression. Now I've worn these side by side since that video. And I have to tell you, when you spray them on side by side, they're actually pretty different. Yeah, it's one of those things where you smell a fragrance and you think to yourself, oh, it's it smells like that one. But then when you do a side by side comparison, you realize, oh, I mean, it kind of smells like that one, but not as close as I thought. Yeah. So right out the gate, Le Mal Elixir has more of a a deep, rich sweetness to it. So honey is going to be one of the main notes in Le Mal Elixir, and it has that over Le Mal Le Parfum. So in the opening, 
elixir, as I said, richer, deeper, sweeter, maybe a little bit bolder, and to me, less powdery than Lamal de Parfum. Lamal de Parfum has more of a concentration on a green cardamom that's not really a hyper sweet cardamom, and uh, that is mixing with lavender, and then the iris in the opening and the first part of the mid, whereas Elixir, while it does have lavender, it's not as prominent here. It kind of falls a little bit more to the background than it does in La Mal de Parfum. So instead what you get is the honey, the vanilla, the benzoin coming out in La Mal Elixir really early on. Now, as I said, that lavender is there, but it's not as much uh, a main part, a main focal point of the fragrance as it is in Le Parfum. And as it dries down, those differences, they stay, they are maintained. So La Mal de Parfum, a little bit more powdery, uh, a little bit fresher. It's not really a fresh fragrance, but it's fresher than La Mal Elixir is. And Elixir is more warm, sensual, sweet, almost a little bit sticky at times. Has a tobacco leaf that comes out in the base of the fragrance that smells awesome. And it just feels a little bit more ramped up as well. Like there's a, a little bit more of heft to it compared to La Mal de Parfum, which is not at all a dig on La Mal de Parfum because I think that this is fantastic. But I have to tell you, somehow, some way, I like Elixir more. This is just one of those scents that it was so good initially, and the more you wear it, it becomes really addictive. In the air, it is just lights out, like 10 out of 10, awesome. When the wind is whipping around and you catch some whiffs of this stuff, yeah, like it, it's understood <laughs> from my point of view why this is so hyped, because it is just great. And even though I've said uh, that there are these differences between the two, you can still pick up that La Mal de Parfum DNA here. So it's not like when I'm talking about these differences that they're worlds apart. It's just when you have them on side by side, like one here, one here, and you go back and forth, you can tell which is which. They're not close enough to where you would ever get them confused, but they're close enough that you could see, oh yeah, I can see that these are related. So it's like they took the La Mal de Parfum backbone, that DNA, and they said, okay, let's make it a bit sweeter, a little darker, richer, and really dollop on that like dark honey over top and give it that tobacco underneath, which to me really improves it. And I actually prefer it having a little less powder than what Le Parfum has. Not that Le Parfum is a powder beast or anything like that, but still. Yeah, uh, for me, the hype is real. Le Mal Elixir is awesome. I love the fragrance. It's going to be in my winter top 10 designers for sure. Just like telling you right now, it's gonna be right up there toward the very top. But I will say this, as far as uh, seasonality goes, there is one potential issue with these two, if you wanna call it that, is that they are going to overlap a lot as far as when they would be used. Most people are gonna say, this is a fall and winter fragrance, and this is a fall and winter fragrance. This one is maybe a little better for an evening out. This one is maybe a little better for an evening out. So you do have a lot of cross-pollination as far as when you would wear these. Maybe you could say that um, La Mal Le Parfum is, is slightly more elegant. La Mal Elixir is a little bit sweeter and maybe trying a little harder to get somebody's attention. But they do have a lot of overlap as far as uses go. And in terms of performance of Elixir, it's very, very good. Longevity, well above average projection, well above average, which you would frankly expect for a fragrance named Elixir that has all of these, these sweet notes in it. You would expect that power and it has it. And in terms of performance versus Le Parfum, I would say Elixir is a little bit stronger. Le Parfum has great longevity, but the projection is not quite as loud as Elixir's. So you do get a little more a little more power here. I have to say it's probable there's not gonna be another designer fragrance this year that exceeds my expectations as much as this one did because it was following up on Le Parfum, which again, I still think is one of the best flankers that's come out in years. It's right up there in the upper echelon. I'm not saying it's the very best, I'm saying it's like in the S tier as far as flankers goes. And to be following up on that, you would expect it just to kind of regress a little bit because you would think, yeah, I mean, this one is already up in the upper echelon. Are you gonna be able to push past that? Not likely, no. And then it did. So, Lamal Elixir, I love it. I can't wait to wear this this fall and winter. I still love this one. I still love it. I'm not at all taken away from this. Is this is this like the hot new thing? 
kind of, but it earned it. So there we go, Jean-Paul Gaultier, Le Mans Elixir. I like it more now versus the first impression. And I really liked it during the first impression. So really good. I wanna thank you guys for hanging with me. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.